So, Melanie, the second season of You, Me, Her just wrapped up on Audience Network. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about uh, what your guys' expectations were going into the second season. Um, it's hard. I feel like with any show you try and, I mean, not just with this show, but personally, I try and keep my expectations very grounded because you have no idea what's going to happen. There's been so many jobs that I've done in the past where, um, you know, the expectations are so high. and then really they come in pretty low uh, uh, afterwards and you know vice versa and so I've kind of learned to try not to have any um, and I feel like I did that with this but you know going into the second season and having done the first and the response from the first season was was really great so um, yeah I think that it was just exciting to get to do a second season and at that point I think um, yeah we knew we were going to do a third season as well so it was just, I think, um, I think, yeah, like the morale on set was just like pretty happy because that's rare that that happens. Um, so we were just hoping people would still like it. I think the tone in the second season is, have you seen both seasons? I have, yes. Okay, you know, slight, it's slightly different. Um, and in the second season, it kind of dives more into the supporting storylines, which was awesome for me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, so we were hoping the the audience from season one would still enjoy season two as much or even more. Mm -hmm. Well, since people are still discovering the show, tell us a little bit about the premise and about your character, Nina. So the show is about a polyamorous relationship, uh, about these two um, sur the, the suburban married couple who are, I guess, like, you know, bored in their relationship and want to jazz things up a little bit. And, um, the way that's depicted, I think John Scott Shepard did a really good job of making that depicted in a really real way because you see two people, and of course Rachel Blanchard and Greg Poehler do an awesome job um, of playing these two people who love each other but are kind of torn because it's just that sort of like monotonous relationship of doing the same thing over and over. And um, in comes this young college girl, Izzy, and the way Greg meets her through escorting, um, because she's an escort and I'm her best friend, Nina. I am an escort as well. <laughs> I'm the escort to pay her way through college, which is kind of unconventional. But um, again, the way John wrote it, it was just very fun and out there, but kind of worked because he made the characters really grounded. Um, but yeah, so, so Izzy kind of gets messed up in this relationship and um, they both fall in love with her. And where Nina comes in is she's, I guess, sort of more Izzy's window into college life still, because she is your, I mean, as out there and crazy as she is, she's kind of like your typical 20 something college girl who um, is just having fun, she's dating, she's, um, you know, not too many, her biggest care is like, can she get a beer at noon? Um, is she gonna pass her test? You know, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, when she sees Izzy falling in love with this married couple, it really threatens their relationship. Um, and it's it's a cool dynamic with the two of them because I think Nina's always Izzy's pull back to the the um, her regular kind of college life because she is diving into something. I mean, a polyamorous relationship, no one really talks about that. And that's what I think is cool about this show. Sorry, I know I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> that's what's cool about this show because I think it's bringing awareness to a community of people that, um, and we're not the only show that's done it, but um, you know, giving a voice to a community of, of people that don't just have one partner. Mm -hmm. And did you, uh, I'm trying to think of a personal way to ask this, but did you do any research into uh, that lifestyle uh, before you uh, came aboard this show? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the streets. Okay, hey, well, no, no, you know what? I, I didn't I I have actually seen um uh, because Netflix is so awesome, I feel like, you know, there is you have like a library of movies now that you can watch anytime and there are there are actually some some movies of um, you know, young escorts that I'd seen in passing, but not like this. This was kind of more of a um dare I say like a playful nature because nothing's ever shown with the escorting that they do um and i, I don't want to say more innocent because i don't want to peg it as that but um it doesn't the, the show isn't about that so it doesn't really dive too much into it um so i just kind of approached it for more of like a fun 
a fun place, which is, I think, how Nina thinks of it. Because here, she's going on all these dates with guys, and she's dressing up in all these weird outfits and, you know, being their fantasy. And I think Nina kind of wanted to, um, you know, have as much fun with that as possible. But then, as you see in the second season, she doesn't do it anymore. Um, she gets, like, a regular job at a bar because I think – you know, you can only do something like that for so long. You can pretend it's fun, but it's not fun. You mentioned the job. What are some of the other ways that Nina grew and, and changed this season? Well, um, it was awesome for me this season because I got a little bit more of my own storyline. Um, with, uh, with Jared Joseph, she, you know, starts to kind of fall in love on her own. And, um, and I, I think it's awesome. John, again, I'm praising his writing, but he, he really does – write uh he writes really well for females and i think that um you know as strong as nina is because she is portrayed as a really strong female character um you know you see a lot of her vulnerability this season because last season she's sort of just dealing with izzy's problems um and you didn't really see and, and there, there was one episode in season one episode nine where they're under the sheets and and she's finally opening up to Izzy about, you know, some of her insecurities and who she really is. And that that's probably my favorite scene I've ever shot um, in the in the in the series. But I think that, you know, because of that scene actually, I just kind of felt like maybe more vulnerability was written into Nina's character. Um, and she has her own relationship this season and she's not really sure what she's doing. You know, it's it's again like the college life, the insecurity he wrote so well of fall in love, um, feeling guarded. Dina's very guarded. So um, I got to play a lot of different things this season um, and still have her, you know, her fun, sarcastic, kind of icy self, but um, kind of get more of her softer side as well, which was fun for me. Right. Um, it's interesting in terms of this polyamorous relationship because you are an outsider. And so we get an outsider's perspective to it uh, through you. I mean, in a way you're almost sort of like an audience member mm -hmm. uh, yourself. Can you talk a bit about that? Um, well, I think that the way that Nina reacted to it was like, you know, how most friends that um, have never even, um, you know, wrapped their mind around something like that would react. And of course she, her 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 first priority is Izzy because the relationship they have is like a sisterly love. It's such a crazy bond that immediately she sees her going into this relationship and she's like, what the hell are you doing? You're gonna, you know, you're gonna get screwed over, you're gonna get hurt, you're gonna get your heart broken again, and who's gonna pick up the pieces? It's gonna be me. Um and so I think that that she she is sort of Izzy's reasoning voice in the situation because she sees her friend going off the deep end with a married couple. Like, how is this going to end? And in the second season, um, I hope everyone who's watching this has watched, but, you know, they're talking about having a baby and, and stuff. And this is just not in Nina's realm of, of, of life at all. You know, months earlier, they were just two friends doing regular things. I mean, like getting in tons of trouble and having fun and they were each other's kind of everything. And I think that Nina wants it that way because it's a lot safer for her to, to give her friend away. It's basically like having a breakup, you know, mm -hmm. which is sort of what we see at the beginning of season two. It's kind of like the war. She doesn't think of it as like a breakup with a friend. It's like the worst heartbreaking breakup because she's giving her friend away to this couple and she just, I, I think that, you know, no matter what, Nina kind of thinks this isn't going to end mm -hmm. the way you think it's going to end. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's a bit negative about the whole thing as much as she loves Izzy and wants to support her. But um, she's, she's being real. Mm -hmm. And working with Priscilla Fire, what's that uh, collaboration like between the two of you? Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> no, she, <laughs> she, she's amazing. Um, you know, we met in rehearsals before the first season and um, that first day we met, it was like something magical happened. We just, within five minutes, knew that we were gonna be great friends. And to this day now, she's a great friend of mine, but um, I, I've never had anything like that on set with anyone before. You meet lots of great people, but um, with her, it's like not acting. I feel like 
it's kind of, I hope she says something like that about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one would. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no one would. I'll never tell. No, yeah, she was very <laughs> happy. When we're thinking about acting, I, um, I get so excited to go to set and do scenes with her because it just kind of flows like butter, you know? Um, and we, the way we improv together, the way we, um, you know, just, just, uh, I just feel like it's really special. And I, to be honest, I think that, um, you know, in season one, when, uh, when I was first hired for the job and when they thought of the role as Nina, um, I don't know if it was supposed to be this relationship that it is now, because I think after seeing how Priscilla and I kind of created these two characters together, created this relationship and people really liked that. I think that's kind of why it took off more in the second season, the, the relationship. Um, yeah. And what does John Scott Shepard and, and your directors, you've had two directors, one in the first season, one in the second season, what do they give you guys that really helps facilitate that relationship? Um, a lot of trust. I feel like John, um, right off the bat with us, I think after you know shooting the first few scenes, uh, because I actually never met John before I even got hired for the job. I was cast off of, I was cast off of tape. Um, and John and our first season director, Nisha Ganatra, just, I don't know why, put that trust in me. So when um, we finally met during the rehearsals, um, I feel like that's kind of what was given right away. And that is a privilege because you don't always get that as an actor on a set. Um, sometimes there's a lot of feeling of like, okay, now show me, sh you know, show me what you can what you can do with this and as an actor you feel a lot of pressure like oh god i hope i you know deliver what they want but with them it was never it was never that i felt the trust right away and to be honest i feel like that that is a big reason why priscilla and i just kind of like sat into those characters really well um and were free to play with them and then in the second season sarah saint Ange really she carried that torch into the second season because um you know, I, I think that she really trusted in us as well. I think that that really is the biggest thing, um, just being able to play freely uh, because you don't get that a lot, you know, especially in TV. TV is so fast paced. So it's, you know, like hit your mark, hit your line, um, you know, look this way. It's, it's, it's so procedural a lot of the time. But with this show, we, um, I think it's just because our creators and the people around are really trusting creatively. And you're also able to play this character over 20 episodes, now going to be 30 episodes. I mean, what's <laughs> what's it like playing a character for that long of a, an arc? Well, you know, we shoot in a, uh, we block shoot. And so it goes by like that, which is crazy even to hear you say we've done 20 episodes because, you know, we shoot the show pretty fast. So like within the, you know, three month period, that we're shooting the 10 episodes per season, it goes by like that. And within a day you're shooting scenes from like, you know, six different episodes. So I feel like it's kind of a whirlwind. It's not the same as shooting chronologically. Um, but I feel like the, the, and I'm really excited to see what we do this next year, but um, you know, in the first season to the second season, you really see Nina grow and kind of come more into herself because she really is sort of like, hacking at a ice pick, I think, <laughs> you know, in the first season, like she's very, um, she's very quick witted. Uh, she wants people to see her in a certain way. And in the second season that really gets broken down and you get to see the softer side of her. So I'm, I'm excited to see what we do with the third season. The show is set in Portland. I know you guys shoot in, in Vancouver, uh, obviously, but I mean, what, what do you think the setting of the show adds to the storyline? You know, I don't know, I guess, like the saying, what is the saying in Portland? Keep Portland weird? Right, yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you get to be a little crazier and weirder. I, I just think that, um, you know, and that's that's like a, that's a John thing. He loves Portland. To be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time in Portland. But I'd like to think the people of Portland are awesome. And we are portraying them as awesome people. <laughs> You do a very good job substituting Vancouver for Portland. I was, I was talking to some of your people yesterday, like, so yeah, you shoot this all in Portland, right? Like, no, Canada. <laughs> I go crazy, right? Yeah, Vancouver is good for a lot of different places. Yeah. Well, I look forward to season three, Melanie. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations.
Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good one.